What do you get when you combine wanton narcissism, widespread nutritional deficiency, and spiritual melancholia? Answer, the contemporary genderless youth. And if that isn't enough, the countless hours hovering over electronic devices, lack of outdoor activity, and a general disdain for healthy social diversions has brought the latest generation of Western youth to a point that now imperils the continued existence of Western civilization. Even the usual disengagement of your typical youth, a malaise that has been ruthlessly fostered by the media elite ever since its victory over McCarthy in the 1950s, has an uncanny edge to it. This is an utterly nihilistic group of young people, and many of them literally do not care about anything but themselves. Sociologists will say this is predictable teenage behavior going back to the Stone Age. Meteorologists will assert that this is evidence of climate change. But none of it deals with the root cause, for all of this is fostered by the individual postmodern personality. And in the following we will attempt to explain how, during its formative stages, the current generation is being modified to suit the establishment's desire for a homogeneous, sexually sterile, Western human type. From the very beginning, when the first communities began organizing themselves through governments, the issue of sexuality and the legislation of laws pertaining to it were central in their governance. This can be seen codified in so many religious books and clay tablets that, for economy's sake, we need not develop this notion any further. For the most part, the intended effect was to introduce commonly understood standards of practice or forms of engagement when it came to marriage, procreation, and healthy sexual practices. As communities evolved into ever more complex polities, institutions were required to handle the various branches of society where oversight was needed, such as policing, courts of law, or currency creation. These were originally intended to serve a social purpose, that is, for the greater good of the people the laws were supposed to represent. As time went by, however, the idea of government began to change. Special interest had always had a hand in ruling society. No kingdom could have governed without them. But with the slow decay of monarchical absolutism and the rise of the elitist schools of governance, these special interest groups now had greater sway in politics. They became sponsors of new social theories, which included a belief that the rule of law must be expanded to all facets of the civilization. The last three centuries of Western political history, it can be argued, has been the struggle between the two ideologies of pervasive versus minimal governance. However that may be, the rise of Marxism and the 20th century idea of total government ensured that the statist philosophy of rule would be the contemporary method of choice. But what does this have to do with pansexual delusions? Everything. Despite some attempts by a few good politicians to impede the process, the increasing centralization of government and bureaucratic overreach, particularly in the EU, Canada and the USA, means that a massive expansion of law codes and legislation has been made possible. In addition to this, all of the entities above have a ruling class that is infatuated with cultural Marxist social theory, a model that offers complete control over society and the individual. Furthermore, considering that cultural Marxist philosophy is, practically speaking, a social engineering model, there is now the potential to create a completely new human type. And if absolute power is their goal, the last thing they would want is a confident, heterosexually virile, independently minded population that, by its very nature, poses as an existential threat to their political monopoly. Rather, over a generation or two, permit the introduction of phthalate esters and atrazine into the food chain, allow the unimpeded rise of estrogens to build up in boys and testosterone in girls, forcefully legislate sex education curricula into primary schools, with particular consideration given to LGBT attitudes, and sexual confusion will become the engine of society. Hence, a gender-confused sexual dysphoria becomes a key opening or vector point into the very heart of a people. Moreover, we contend that sexual confusion will be the weapon of choice against Western populations in the future, whose organic and cultural integrity will become so splintered so as to seem like the entire social order has collective schizophrenia. There is ample evidence to suggest that Western governments have had a preoccupation with scientific research pertaining to the control of human populations over the past 100 years, particularly in the fields of eugenics and psychiatry. Other tactics such as the creation of divisional social issues, cultural Marxist regimentation and the institutionalization of state dependence have done endless harm. But nothing offers more power to a ruling class than the absolute control over the reproductive ability of a population, period. Furthermore, new lifestyles, and more crucially, the ideology that guides them, 
wrecked the nuclear family model within two generations. Children were now being raised by single mothers, next door neighbors, and television sets. The transmission of core family values has ended. Traditional archetypes and the philosophical relationship between family members has been dismantled. To make things worse, agri-corporations and synthetic foods companies insist on unhealthy marketing schemes, which have drastically altered Western eating habits. Untested industrial materials, plastics, biotoxins, chemically caused allergies, vaccinations, and rampant depression are all coalescing to target entire European populations in a very short span of time. Included with this, the least considered cause of the gender-confused generation, and this is statistically borne out, is the fatherless household. In the US alone, some 40% of all teenagers suffering from gender dysphoria come from single mother homes. Realistically, however, the rate is probably much higher. The father archetype influences personality and sexual awareness far more profoundly than the mother, for it is the primordial function of the father archetype to promote the fundamental distinguishing of opposites and, consequently, differentiation of various unconscious contents. Carl Jung wrote, There is no consciousness without discrimination of opposites. And for so many now, it is the lack of a father that has brought them to this unhappy place. When the consciousness centers are not being lit up, the ability to discriminate between opposites, including sexes, is handicapped. It is really that simple. The long-term consequences of the Western elite's tinkering in social engineering could not have been known to them from the outset, but they struck gold nevertheless. And what are the odds that they would let a heterosexual European patriarchy flourish once again in the West? One would think they would rather let it burn like a funeral pyre than let go of their halakhic power.